Welcome to the Introduction to Humio video series. This is the fourth in a series of seven videos aimed at introducing you to Humio log management. In our previous video, we covered ingesting data into Humio. Now we are ready to query our data using the powerful and flexible Humio query language. Let's get started. From its inception, Humio has been focused not only on historical data, but also on streaming or live data as it comes into an enterprise. This enables faster responses by being able to have actionable data at the fingertips of those who need it. Humio offers just one language to handle queries across all your data. There is no need to learn different commands for handling different data, be it streaming, live, or historical. You can tell Humio the type of window to search as explained here. The Humio query language is the syntax that lets you compose queries to retrieve, process, and analyze data in Humio. Queries are generally used on the search page of the Humio user interface. The query language is built around a chain of data processing commands linked together. Each expression passes its result to the next expression in the sequence, allowing you to create complex queries by combining query expressions. This architecture is similar to command pipes, a powerful and flexible mechanism for advanced scripting in Unix and Linux shells. Here is an example of a query where we are looking for errors with a given severity or higher we then do a count of those errors and check if it is of an unusually high amount. It is important to do the majority of your filtering before the first pipe as shown here. In this case, we skip searching for log levels of info, warn, debug, whatever. We are only interested in errors. The key is to specify this filter scope before the first pipe. Let's dive into the Humio query language. As we do, you will see that it is a powerful collection of capabilities, operators, and functions. Some filter, some transform and augment, others aggregate data into result sets like tables or bucketed time series. This slide shows a brief overview. We will dive deeper throughout this presentation. You can filter for strings, regexes, and fields, as well as use conditionals via Humio's case function. You can transform and create new fields with a concatenate, replace, and eval. There is also a shortcut for eval using the colon equal to operator in an assignment statement. Finally, Humio offers a number of aggregate functions like time chart, group by, and count. The next few slides will break this down even more. If I advance the slide before you are through viewing it, simply pause the video and continue when you are ready. Free text filtering is easy. Simply search strings and or quoted strings. You can also search for regular expressions or regexes by wrapping them in the, the string in a couple of forward slashes. As you develop more complex queries, you may want to use the comment functionality by prepending a double forward slash to the desired text. This also aids in documenting queries for reuse and understanding by a broader audience. If you have fields extracted, filtering on their value or presence in events is simple. You can also look for regexes in field values. A standard set of comparison operators lets you filter on numbers, looking for variations of equals, greater than, or less than. You can combine filters using the AND, OR, as well as the NOT Boolean operators and group them in parentheses. There is also a useful alternative of using the exclamation point instead of the keyword NOT. Last but certainly not least, Humio offers a rich collection of query functions. 
functions like count, group by, field length, and more. You can also augment or enrich fields using the match function, linking fields with CSV files or JSON files that has corresponding column or field values. As to the time chart, we will give a deeper dive into that in our next video on dashboarding. Let's take a look at how to get started using the group by function as an example. Group by needs a field or an array of fields signified by enclosing the array in square brackets. An aggregate function is needed and if one is, is not specified, Humio will use the count function by default and will create a variable called underscore count also by default. As you will see, it's possible to override defaults. This slide illustrates the use of Humio defaults, as well as explicitly specifying default values. In my beginnings with the Humio query language, I found this a useful technique to confirm my understanding of the syntax by understanding and examining the results shown. In this case, both, quer both queries yield the same results. Now let's get our hands dirty. I've started and stopped the data generation data generator in the Humio Made Simple tutorial. This will give me a specific number of events to verify my statistics by. As we go through a few examples, please note that the lion's share of functionality in the Humio query language is function calls. Great power and agility comes from tweaking parameters in those function calls. First, in looking closer at the data, which is obviously demo data, you will see the, the response size is different and for is fixed for each event. Let's give that value a bit of variability. We will use the length of our event field raw string for a demo value. Here I've listed several ways to do that as well as using the comment function to step through them. If I do length raw string, notice that a length underbar length variable is created by default because I didn't specify one. Now I'll show you several ways of specifying your own variable. We can use the as parameter in the raw in the length function and here we have raw length. We can also do an eval function and assign raw length in the assignment statement. We can use the shortcut for the eval function and use the colon equals to do the same assignment. As well as we can replace the response size with the link to get the data result that we want. Now let's revisit the group by method with the default function of count. Notice the count is created here, and by specifying the defaults explicitly, we can get the same result. Now we're going to build on this by modifying the default function. Here I've used my response size calculation, as well as in addition to grouping by the method, I'm going to group it with the average response size and name that as average response size. So I'm using a completely different field in, instead of the one that was originally done and specified. And that calculates my average response size. Now suppose I wanted to replace that with max. I can simply replace the max function and it calculates the max response size. To take that another step forward, I can use the n function, in, and only look at the values for post, put, and get. I'm using the same response size calculation, the same max response sizes, and I'm doing a sort and declaring that the reverse is false. And there I've done another group by. One more thing I'll show you is I can lose this field method and show you another shortcut. 
by typing in the tilde equal sign. I can use that as a shortcut for anywhere the field parameter is required. We hope you found this video useful. Stay tuned, there's more to come.